Hey guys, Hastings here and welcome to this week's episode of Rapid Racing. Um, this is just a picture or an image on the screen of the Zonda Cinque that I had much Cinque. That I'm still having much uh, problems with, mucho problema, with, uh, with the pronouncing the C, which is in Zonda C. Yes, I'm babbling, aren't I? Right, let's, I suppose, get into it. So, as per usual, the first thing we need to do is to select a class to find out what we're going to be building for. So, let's spin that spinner. Don't know if you can hear that. It's rather quieter than I remember. Get spinning around to go and pass C. And we've got B class. Have we had B class before? I don't know if we have, you know. We may have done. I'm not sure. All oh, right, yeah, timer. <laughs> um, yes, okay, this timer started, so let's go and buy a car. I can't remember if we've had a B-class car or not. I don't know. What are we, we going to go for? Could go for anything, really. Nissan 37. I don't, I've never bought one of those. I have said before in the series, I do like to buy cars that I haven't driven before. And uh, as you can probably see as I'm scrolling through, there are very few. Most of them have the garage symbol on them. Although, the Dodge Charger, I believe, I don't know. I'm going to go for this because in, I think it was, I think it was Forza 4, you could have the um, ball bars on the front, like in the Fast and Furious 5 film. So that, and that is basically the only reason I'm choosing this car for a novelty factor. Okay, so we've, we've taken less than a minute to choose our car and we get a nice little uh, achievement thingy there. Probably for Dodge Collector or something like that. So, with approximately four minutes left, I'll go and do my build and I will catch up with you very shortly. Okay, so let's go and get on and talk you through this build. I have just noticed before I start talking about this that I've got a really squeaky chair and it's been plaguing a few of my videos lately. So, I do apologize for the constant squeaking. There it is in the back of my videos. Um, as this dodge was going to be pretty damn heavy to start with, I decided the first thing to do would be take out the uh, take out the weight and use the right waste rate race weight reduction. There we go. I always have trouble saying that. Also went through all of the rest of the handling parts, as you can see. And then when I went I went onto the uh, aero, I was then disappointed to see that I couldn't have the ball bars. Very sad day for Dodgers. Very sad indeed. But I kind of moved on. I decided to not put any arrow on. It's only B class, so I wasn't too fussed about having tons of downforce. I figured I'd go for a nice power build ish with all the handling parts. Totally makes sense. Yes, so I then uh, just filled up a bit of power, put decent tyres on it, and you could see it all on screen. You don't really need me to talk about it. Um, I was in an experimental mood, so I'm just flicking through, or I, I was just sat there flicking through, just changing things ever so slightly. Okay guys, I've got about a minute and a half left, but I'm pretty much done. I've kind of experimented with some of the tuning there. Um, I'm not sure 100% what some of that does, but <laughs> we will find out once we go to the races. So as per usual, I'm going to go and stick my paint job on the car. Oh yeah! And I'm very disappointed that I can't have the ball bars. So that is slightly disappointing. Well, very disappointing. Just completely contradicted myself. But regardless, I'm going to go and paint my car. And I will see you again for the races very shortly. The first race would take us to Laguna Seca. Where, surprise, surprise, I'm starting from pretty damn near the back of the grid. But let's not dwell on that and see how we do off the launch. Big heavy car, lots of power, should have decent traction, and indeed it does. We fly straight past the car ahead of us as a car's flying behind, and there is an almighty crash on the start line. Somehow we get through that completely unscathed. By the first corner, we're up to third. The guy in second decides to uh, do some rally crossing and straight, straight lines it into a wall. So thank you very much. I will take second position and see if I can do anything about chasing down the guy ahead of me. It's like I'm very sideways through the camera at this point there and we'll see if he's got a relatively sizable gap maybe but we'll see if we can do anything about that throughout the course of this race and there was please don't tell me I was the only one that I saw that there was definitely a rolling or flipping car in the background please don't say I'm seeing things I'm sure there was I didn't 
That's the first time I've seen that. I've watched this replay about three times. That's the first time I've noticed that. <laughs> okay, um, yeah, let's move back onto me. We now jump forward a few corners so you can see this hives of gap that the guy in front has got. And you can just about see the guy in third popping onto the screen as well. So we've got relatively equal gaps both in front of us to the guy in first and behind us to the guy in third. And throughout this race, it was kind of the most eventful and yet uneventful race that I've had in a long time. It was it was uneventful because there wasn't anyone close enough to battle with. And yet it was rather eventful because there was a car in front of me and a car behind me, both within, you know, I could see them both. It was nerve wracking trying to maintain the gap. And also because it was a, to the first race in this car, I was getting used to it. It's not the easiest car to drive. More on that later. But yeah, we jumped now amazingly already to the final few corners of the race because the gap as you can see has pretty much stayed the same from the end of like lap one so as we come around the final corner uh we are in a solid second position and get some nice airtime to uh finish in that second position which we gained slowly early on and for once the ai does manage to get around the first corner but that now brings us on to the second race at the Bernie's Alps and I would actually be starting in like the middle of the grid this is dizzy heights on the start line for me and off the line there was a car that doesn't start just about there and we seem to out drag both the Golf and the Civic now you're going to be seeing a lot of that Civic in this race we go up the inside of a Lancia and once again we gain second position it's like rather early on there's a flying car going past the camera and we get a tap from the Civic around the other side of the corner and we get another tap from the Civic and he ends up going sideways. So somehow I'm still in second position going through the very fast flying section downhill where you would always get a rather large amount of air time. And to talk, going back to talking about this, um, this car, it's kind of unresponsive as I mentioned and that's kind of to be expected but with an unresponsive car I generally, because it was unresponsive, I tried to bully it around the corners, or easy, I throw it in, floor it out. And it didn't really like doing that, because when I tried to floor it out, that would happen. And I'd get rather sideways and leave a big trail of smiles, uh, tire smoke behind me. You can see there, the Civic and the Supra bumping into each other. And I'm going to take a minute to rant about that Civic. You've only seen a few little bumps of his in this early race. But he was an incredibly dirty and very gamesmanship imploring driver. He was, you can see around the first corner, he gave me a few different taps, and you'll see another one in this race as well. He has multiple incidences with the Supra. And the worst thing about it was, he was a quick driver. He, like, in the first race, you saw him, he was maintaining the gap to me. I don't proclaim to be Lewis Hamilton, but this isn't the fastest car in the world. And I'm still battling near the front in pretty much every race. You know, come on, you can battle near the front. If I can battle near the front, and you can battle near the front, we can have a good race and enjoy racing. You don't need to bump into people. And he was cutting corners as well, that was the other thing. Um, you didn't, I think you might have just about seen it at the final corner of Laguna Seca. But in the next race, you will see him cutting some corners as well, I think. I'm not sure on that, I'm, I'm not sure if there's any other thing. But yeah, he was cutting corners and he was bumping into people left, right and centre. And generally being a dick. Coming three wide out of that corner as the Super tried to go up the inside and the uh, Civic fortunately comes off worst and we have a little touch with the Supra and we lose we lose out. Um, going up the inside of the Civic now and we're on the inside for this right hand kink and he squeezes into a wall putting us rather out of shape through the fast section and we drop back a bit as we come over the crest. Heading down now into the left hand up where we see that Civic took out the Supra. Told you it was dirty. So we managed to regain the second position, which we dropped. And I'm, I, if I keep ranting about this Civic, I do apologize. I'm not normally one to get so worked up about this type of thing, but this guy was really pissing me off. And there was at least two other races that I did in this car, both of which I couldn't use the footage because I was crashed out on both of them very early on and there was no way that I could catch up again. And both times, it was by that blasted Civic. Um, I, w I did try and go and find another lobby at one point, but this I kept getting put back into the same one, so I just kept going and got some 
I've actually got some half decent races out of it. Um, once again, going into the final section, the Supra, which had far superior grip and handling to our muscle car, would uh, have a look up the inside, going into the final corner. And there was nothing I could really do about that because I haven't got the handling to keep it around the outside um, and keep it close. So I dropped back slightly, but I can use my superior speed to get him out of the corner and in the run up to the first corner. And I do manage to go up the inside, although the Supra pulls a pretty smart move really, going up, taking a nice wide exit there. He uh, executes a very nice cutback and nice kudos to him. That Supra also had quite a few issues with the Civic uh, throughout these races. So massive respect to him, it was a great drive. And look at that shot as we both go over and the uh, crest and get some air there. And with my speed, I do have a look up the inside, and but I get sideways under braking and kind of cause a bit of contact. It was a, only a minor collision though, unfortunately. Neither of us lost too much time and I didn't unfairly gain a position. The Supra did manage to stay ahead of me. Final clip of this race would see us going up the hill to start with and the Supra got a bit of a wide line through there, touched the dirt and had a bad exit. So I saw my opportunity. I got a good run through the corner and I started chasing him up the hill to see if I could do anything. And I just about got alongside as we went over the top of the hill. But I just couldn't hold it there. I just didn't have the handling and the Supra managed to hold it around the outside and we couldn't quite snatch that second position. It was the same story around the penultimate corner. The Supra just had much better drive and I couldn't close up. Now, Civic flies off into the distance, smashes against the barrier, which helps him around the corner and overtakes me for third position. So with no small amount of bullshit, we got beaten by that bloody Civic in race two. The final race would take us to Road Atlanta full a track that I like so much that it is going to be starring in a new series. Keep an eye out for that. And off the line, we got a pretty decent start and the cars were actually three wide in front of us, but I was going to overtake them. So I had to make a gap between a Ferrari and a Civic. Regardless, I would get through the middle of them and take the positions off both of their hands with a Nissan Fairlady just in front of me. So hopefully they will be my next victim and get past them as well. The Civic was cutting across a the corner there and getting very sideways through the next bit. I'm, gonna, I'm not gonna dwell on the Civic this race. I'm determined not to. I'm just gonna focus on moving up the field as far as I can. And to start with, that means I've got to get past this Nissan Fairlady, which doesn't seem to be happening too much at the moment. He's quite a long way ahead. But as we come into the very difficult double right hand corner, we do gain one position as a golf got it wrong and uh, went onto the grass. So we gained a position that way. Through the second part of that double right hand corner, we got a pretty good run through there. And I can only presume that the white Subaru up ahead didn't. Either that or he's just got no power at all because he didn't lose one. He lost two places down the straight and he was a long way ahead of me when I got onto that. So as you can see from this view, that means that I am now currently in third position. And as we come round this corner here, you can see the Civic cutting another corner. Told you, told you so, told you so. Oh, I hate that Civic, it's really getting under my skin. I'm really sorry for dwelling on it in this video, but it's really winding me up, but I don't know why it's doing it to such a degree. But from the end of the first lap, we're now gonna jump to the start of the last, because bugger all else happened in the entire race. I've had boring races before, but this probably tops the lot. Nothing happened. Look at the gaps around me. There's just nothing to do. I mean, I could see the fair lady in the distance, but he was actually cutting the odd corner as well. So I had no chance of catching him. I, I really feel like I've just been whining and moaning in this video. I hope it's still been somewhat entertaining. I've still managed to have, still managed to, um, yeah, I've still managed to have a few good results in this video. Three three decent half races I thought. So we might as well now move on to the scores as we watch my past self finish off this race. In the first race we finished second at Long Beach. The second race quite annoyingly we came fourth at the Bernie's Alps and in this race at Road Atlanta we would hold on to this third position even managing to lap somebody. 
I didn't actually realise that was in the video. I've only just seen that. <laughs> okay, we'll move on. Yes, so that gives this car a subtotal of nine points. So to move on the score that I'm going to give it for speed, I'm looking at it in relation to others in the table, and I think a four would suit this car quite well. It was definitely faster than the Mini that we had. I think it was in the second ever episode of this. But it wasn't quite on par with the likes of the Zonda and the Aston and the Beamer that have all got a three. Next up is the drive score. And again, I'm just looking and comparing to see other things on the table. And I'm going to give it a five because that's what I gave the Aston Martin DB5. And in some ways, these cars were kind of similar to drive. Although the Aston was a lot more oversteery as an AI car gets the first corner very wrong, might actually manage to get for the first corner for once. Although up the second part of the hill or the corner, it's a bit of an accident between the AI there. We'll move on to that. And look at this a nice air shot of, a, of the uh, jump at the Bernie's Alps in the second race. Yes, the score of five for drive. That rhymes. Hey, <laughs> it's the same as the Aston because the Aston was very, very oversteery. And this was slightly oversteery and slightly responsive. And in that, in my mind, that court kind of weighs up as the same to drive. And they, they were both nice to drive without being anything exceptional. So I've given them both an average score. I think that makes sense. I realise I have kind of waffled this last bit, but bear with me. There's only a very small amount of time to go. And we just need to reveal that this car scored a total of 18 points. You've probably worked that out already, which puts it third from bottom on our table, which is quite surprising, really, because this is actually a very average car. I'd expect this to be kind of in the middle. We've been quite lucky so far in this series with a few real corkers of a car. I mean, the Lotus 11 was damn quick. And uh, let's hope we can avoid some more cars like the Mustang. So to find out what we get next week, tune in then. Hastings out. Goodbye.